bankable leadership model works whether you're a CEO of a Fortune 500 company or whether you're an entrepreneur working in a developing country. It's amazing how translatable some of those lessons are. And I love the fact that she ties everything she talks about back to research, right? So hardcore scientific research that she knows backwards and forwards. Tasha is um, amazing and inspiring. She makes me feel like um, I can do it. Now, unfortunately, I have some bad news. Does anybody want to take a guess at the percentage of leaders you think are ineffective? 70%? We have an optimist in the room. <laughs> Anyone else? 90%. Well, I do agree that everyone can improve. The answer, you ready? Drum roll. Place your bets. 50%. 50% of leaders are ineffective. Now, here's where it gets a little personal and, frankly, a little awkward. Look around the room. <laughs> Statistically, one out of every two of you has some significant work to do. And by the way, this is the part of the day where everyone looks at me like this. So 50% of you are possibly ineffective, again, going statistically, but all of us can improve. Does anyone think they're a perfect leader? All right, that is very smart. So I gave you the bad news. 50% of leaders are ineffective. Luckily, there's also great news. Any guesses about the percentage of leadership that you think is learnable? 100, oh, I love you. <laughs> it's very, very high. 75, ooh, whoever that was is closest. 70%. 70% of leadership is learnable. Um, the first time I gave this talk in its current format, somebody's hand shot up and they said, well, that's just a number you pulled out of the air. And I said, au contraire. <laughs> This was a study that was done in 2006 at NUS Business School in Singapore. And the researchers actually looked at the genetic influences behind what makes people selected to be leaders. And they looked at identical twins who were separated at birth. And I, if I told you the methodology, I would get really excited and you would all fall asleep. So I'll just tell you kind of the bottom line, which is that even though 30% of what makes someone become a leader is something inborn, 70% was based on their life experience, their, their mistakes, their learning, their ability to grow throughout their lifetime. And that, that makes sense, right? If you look at somebody like Nelson Mandela, part of him was born that way. He improved as a leader throughout his life, but that doesn't mean that you look at yourself and say, well, I'm not Nelson Mandela, therefore, I am the way I am as a leader. Almost anyone can be a better leader. I always say this is a non-scientific number, but it's sort of scientific, and I'll tell you why. 96% of the world can learn to be a better leader. Are you wondering about that 4%? Any guesses? OK. <laughs> I will tell you. Statistically, 4% of the general population are what we call Sociopaths. <laughs> Sociopaths lack the ability in their brains to empathize and connect with other people at a human level. So I'm going to take them out of the mix. Is anyone here a sociopath? OK. So every single person in this room can be better with true and committed effort.